Hello guys! Welcome to this video course series about functional reactive programming in Angular. My name is Miłosz and I'm going to be your teacher in this course. I'm a big fan about functional reactive programming. I think it's an amazing programming paradigm. It's slightly different from what we are used to, but it gives you a lot of great advantages. So I'd like to share some of my passion with you so that you can also enjoy this amazing programming paradigm. If you are familiar with Angular and if you have building Angular application, you might have noticed that there are observables all over the place. For example, the HTTP client API returns observables or the router API returns observables. So what's the point? Why do we need all these observables? If you have AngularJS background, you probably know that instead of observables we had promises and we were just fine with them. So what's the point of, ha of having all these observables? The reason for that is that authors of the Angular framework, framework decided to promote the functional reactive programming paradigm. And as I said, this is a different programming paradigm from what we are used to. It takes some time to get used to, it might not seem too intuitive in the beginning, but in the long run it can help you build better applications, applications that are easier to maintain and also it will be easier to avoid lots of different common programming mistakes. During this course we will be building an Angular application in a reactive way. We will start with something simple but we will keep adding more and more functionality, learning about RxJS and how to think reactively on the way. I'm going to assume that you have some knowledge of Angular basics, because in this course I'm not going to focus on the basics of Angular, I'm going to focus on the reactive things. So the minimum is that you have completed some Angular basics course or that you are just using Angular on a daily basis. Okay, that's enough talk. Let's get our hands dirty and write some code. During this course, we will take this small reactive bands application, which basically displays a list of music bands. So first, we will transform this application into RxJS based, and then we will be gradually adding more and more functionality using, of course, RxJS. You can get this seed project from GitHub and the URL is displayed below this video. Let me give you a quick run through. So this small app has basically a single component band list. And this component is fetching a list of bands from band data service which is really actually a simulation of some backend service, not a real backend. Then we subscribe to the observable return by get bands and assign it to a field on the component. Later in the template, we simply iterate over the list of bands and display roles in the table. As I said, one data service doesn't really communicate with external server. Instead, it has a hard-coded list of bonds and two methods, one for fetching the bond list and another for updating one of the properties of given bond object. The implementation of these methods is really not important at this point. We also have here an interface describing a bond object and we are also using bootstrap for look and feel. So let me now run this application. Just It's, it's generated with Angular CLI so you can just type ng-serve minus o and here it is. As you saw some latency is also simulated so fetching data from the backend takes approximately one second. We have some header here and a simple table with the list of bonds. Again, if I refresh it, you will see that the data appears just after some time. All right, let's start writing some code. In this lesson, we are not going to start modifying how the 
bond list is deployed, displayed. Instead, we will just play around with RxJS, experiment a little bit, just to get a good understanding, good intuition of what observables actually are. So let's start by creating an observable and for lack of better place we will just place it in the constructor of our bond list component. We'll remove it later. So let's create a constant and call it O. And now we will import a function called interval. We will import it from RxJS observable interval. And this is actually quite a new way of doing stuff in RxJS. In older version, you would have to do something like observable.interval. But this is the new recommended way, which allows, which allows for some build time optimization, such as tree shaking. So if this doesn't work for you, it might mean that you need to upgrade your RxJ version, which is basically here in package JSON file. You can see that I'm using RxJS version 5.5. .5. All right, let's get back to our component. And we are creating this new observable using interval function. And we will pass a number to it. So this function creates a new observable which will emit increasing numbers. So one, two, three, four, etc. And it will actually emit a number every second. And this is because we passed 1000 here. It's the time in milliseconds. So now we've got this observable, we like to do something with it. And one way of doing something with an observable is subscribing to it. So what we can do is type o.subscribe and subscribe takes a callback function. So this function will be invoked on every event, every value emitted by this observable. So let's give it a function which takes value parameter and simply logs it to the console. Okay. Let's see what we've got. Let's go to the browser and let's run developer tools. And let's go to the console. Now we can see that our new observable is actually emitting some values. So this interval observable is actually a good example to get some intuition about what observables are. Because observables are simply streams of events. So in other words, observables are things that will give you some values in the future. And they can give you one value, then they can give you 10 values, they can give you zero values, or they can actually give you infinite number of values. And this is what's happening here. The interval observable is giving us an infinite stream of values. If you are familiar with promises, observables are a bit like promise because as, as you know, a promise is a thing that promises you that it will give you a value in the future. So observable is like more general. It will give you a value in the future or it will give you more values or it could actually give you zero values. Okay, but this doesn't really seem very cool, right? So what's, what's so cool about RxJS? So the power of RxJS is in RxJS operators. RxJS operators are functions that you can apply on the stream of events represented by the observable. These functions can do like a lot of different things to these streams. So they can somehow transform the values emitted in the stream or they can eliminate some of the values from the stream or they can merge two different streams or like 10 different streams. 
And there are like a lot of different options you have, a lot of different things that can be done with streams using RxJS operators. So let's give it a try. In order to apply some operators on RxJS stream, we need to call pipe method. And again, this is quite a new thing in RxJS and you will need to upgrade your RxJS version in order to use that. So this pipe method, it takes a list of parameters and there can be an, as many of these parameters as you like. And these parameters are actually functions that will be applied on this observable stream. So let's start with a very simple one. It's called map. We need to add an import for it. It's from RxJS operators. And the map takes a function that will be applied on every element of the observable. You might be familiar with map method on the array object, which is like built into JavaScript. The map method applies some function to, to every element of an array and returns a new array with these transformed elements. So we can see a clear analogy here because observable is kind of like an array with that difference that elements of, of this array are spread in time. They are not available immediately. They will be emitted in the future. So as we can expect, this function, this operator, will take every value emitted by this observable and simply square it. So let's see it in action. Maybe let's refresh first. And we can see the numbers coming, and now there are just squared numbers. So instead of 2, we get 4, instead of 3, we get 9, and instead of 4, we've got 16, and so on and so on. So we can see the map operator working. So map operator is an example of how we can transform values emitted in the stream. But let's see another operator. Let's see an operator that can change the stream itself. So let's have a look at an operator called filter. So what this operator does, it takes a function which should return a boolean. So let's say we just want even numbers in our stream. So we can divide this with residue by 2 and check that it's equal to 0. Let's now give it a try. Go to the browser and let's refresh first. So we can now see that 3 was skipped because there is no 9 and then 5 was skipped because there is no 25 etc etc. So our filter is filtering values that don't pass this test that return false for this function. Now to get a good intuition of what RxJS operators do, it's sometimes a good idea to look at so-called marble diagrams. Let's open the browser and let's go to this reactivex.io site. Then we have the docs section and we can go to the operators section and let's scroll below and here we can find for example the map operator so when we go there we can see this marble diagram where on the top we have the stream before and later we have on, on, on the bottom we have the stream after applying the transformation so we can see that values from these streams have been multiplied by 10 and then when we look at the filter operator, let's find it here. We can see that on the top there are some more values than on the bottom because some of the values didn't pass the test. The expression passed to the filter function wasn't evaluated to true. 
And actually also this site is a good list of all RxJS operators. And it might intimidate, it might seem intimidating at first because there are a lot of them, but really not all of them are so useful when in common scenarios. Many of them are more like for edge case scenarios. And later when we know more RxJ operation operators, there is a, a very nice decision tree which helps you decide which RxJS operator you need. And it's important to note that this site is not actually dedicated specifically to RxJS. It's dedicated to a more general concept called reactive extensions, which is basically extensions to different programming languages, which allows you to write programs in a reactive way. And we can see here that there are many different variants like RxJS, but also RxJava, Rx.net, etc. So it's also a very good reason to learn RxJS because once you understand it, you will also be able to use reactive extensions in different other programming languages. Okay guys, in this lesson we've learned about the fundamentals of RxJS and we've got some basic intuition of what observables are and how they behave. In the next lesson, we'll start transforming our sample Angular application to an actual reactive application. So thanks for watching and see you in the next lesson.